here today uh, at Touch Math Power Hour to talk about three creative ways to support the challenges of skip counting. Um, and I definitely got carried away with ideas and thoughts um, related to the skip counting process. Let's put it all together. Here we go. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So if you have your touch math materials, you know that we have um, posters. This is an example of an upper grades poster. Uh, my example of a poor, more primary poster is right here. And we have music that sings along. And that is very, very helpful uh, in terms of learning the sequencing of skip counting because of automaticity there. But I wanna talk for a minute about, um, and I moved too quickly forward, I apologize, um, the importance of skip counting uh, in the development of fluency, of calculation, of number sense, um, because it really is the basis of multiplication and division. So as students are learning skip counting, we tend to start with some easier ones are more rote numbers our twos, our fives, our tens, those early numbers uh, tend to be early, easier uh, for students to learn. And you'll find skip counting throughout the um, multiplication lessons. But my strong, strong suggestion is that you start skip counting before you're ready to get into multiplication. We want our students to have that automaticity of skip counting. And so we want to provide a lot of practice that when we get to that actual application, we have, our students are strong. So here are some ideas that I have for things that you probably have in your classroom or that can be easily developed um, to support the materials that you already have from Touch Math. So for instance, we have our hundreds chart and our hundreds chart um, is something that we use for lots of different, different things. Um, but as we're talking about using it for skip counting, I can see I have my two, four, six, eight, ten, right? I have these numbers that I can manipulate in a lot of ways. So my skip counting chart absolutely is one of the things in the classroom that I'm going to use. But I want to break it down. I want to break it down into maybe flip books. So I might start by having my students do their twos and then their threes. This is an example of what a flip chart book might look like in fours. I am going to have my numbers from one to 40 because I want my kids to be able to count to that number. So my twos. I'm going to go um, to, to 10, my threes, to, I'm going to go to 30, my fours to 40. And so I would have a different page for each one of my books um, as I'm working through them. I'm going to want to think about maybe some sensory activities for my students to do, depending on what's going on, or just something a little more creative. So I can do on my fives, I can have my students um, finger paint and we can do a class chart. 
on our fonts. One of the other things that's all over the web, if you are watching, are these uh, sensory buttons. And of course, they are used for a lot of different things. But I really think that this would be a fun tool to use when we're talking about punching out our skip counting. We can punch out four, um, and then eight, and then 12, and, and so on. So I think that these digit kinds of things, um, if you have them in your classroom, if your kids like to use them, that these are great sensory opportunities as well. This is another kind of a flip book idea um, where we are actually writing the number of the sequence on the touch point. So you can see here that I have um, my seven is my first touch point. My touch point on two is seven and 14. My touch point on three is 7, 14, 21. So this might be another way that we might want to look at creating flip books for kids. So as they are solving problems, not only have they had the practice of creating uh, these pages, putting them together in the book, but it also can become a personal support as I'm doing multiplication and division with um the the number sequences i also want to do some physical games so i might play some stand up sit down or line up games so i might give each one of my students on a day um a number card when they walk in the room so I might walk in and if I'm doing threes on a particular day, uh, my first student that walks in gets a three, the next gets a six, uh, a nine, a 12. And those that's the, the skip counting number of the day. And so as I am asking students to do things, I can ask them to stand up in order of skip counting. Let's start with the first, let's start with two. They stand up, what comes next? Or kid with a four stands up, et cetera, sitting down. It may be how I'm gonna line up my students um, at the door by that sequence of numbers. So when they come in on a particular day, I might give out five. Right, so one student has a five, another has a 10, another has a 15, another has a 20, and they're going to line up in the order of that skip counting uh, number so that we get some of that physical movement going on. Board games are terrific for skip counting opportunities. And so I might have board games in my room already. I might have my students work in teams or twos and threes, and each student gets to design their own game uh, board. Um, and it might be that one group is going to create the twos board, one kid's create, group's gonna create the three board, et cetera. And then I'm gonna use these in different activities that I do in my classroom. So once I've created them, I can use them, I can post them around my room and we have them as another example of a skip counting chart. I want playground games. I want to get my kids out in recess. So it might be that I'm gonna begin bouncing a ball uh, while the students skip count in unison to the bounce. Um, once the students have had a chance to practice, um, I send the ball over to them and they pick the number they wanna skip count and they are bouncing this ball as the group is in unison, a skip counting a number. Um, there might be a freeze tag game. So uh, kids are running and then I'm going to call freeze and I'm gonna come out, call out the sequence of the number we're gonna use, 
right? And so each one of the students are going to go around and give me their next number um, on that game. I might be doing jump rope. And as I'm jumping with the kids and that number is going around, we are doing two, four, six, eight, um, those kinds of games that I think are really important, especially with our students that really need practice, but they need to get out and be active. I might have a student with, um, like Karen was mentioning, uh, students with um, attention dis um, attention hyperactivity disorder or ADHD. And I'm going to want to get out there and get them moving. But we need that repetition. We need to have that automaticity built so that our students, when they actually are applying it into their problem solving, their calculation, that it becomes quicker and faster and easier to use. Um, and so I want to make sure that I use lots of different things that are just around, maybe on my playground, getting them moving that way. Um, I have the abacus and I just was having fun and recently had grabbed a picture of my grandson uh, exploring that abacus and kids love to explore an abacus. So if you have one in your classroom, um, it's a great tool. It's also a lot of fun to make them. Um, and so you might consider it as an activity, uh, also not only using that abacus, but actually making the abacus um, for your classroom. It's a fun opportunity. One of the things that I love to see is when a whole school uh, can join in to working on something like skip counting because everybody's going to be doing it in some way or another. And this was just a great example of a school that did their steps to learning their multiples. Um, but there are other ways also. Um, look at in your hallways, uh, what kind of opportunity do you have to give students the ability to do some um, hallway movement that's appropriate, but is still going to build that automaticity, have an opportunity to do those things. And so uh, this really is not my example. I couldn't find exactly what I wanted to share with you, but that you could be doing those kinds of steps, those activities in the hallway that allow students to move and still be working on some on on skip counting. The other side here is an example of a school that did um, a multiplication block, right? But we can do this instead in that skip counting um, in that same way. So this is a great thing if you can talk to your district. Um, uh, or your school about how do we apply skip counting, not just in my classroom, but extending it out um, further uh, into the school. And so at this point, I'm going to exit. I'm going to close my PowerPoint um, to share some things with you. Okay. So now I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, and I'm going to open up to a speaker view so that you can hopefully see me. Um, and um, do I have any minutes left or have I no, used no, them keep, all? Keep going. I was going to actually ask you if you would touch on uh, multi-sensory and sort of call out, you know, how in the examples that you were doing, you were working on see it, say it, hear it, do it, you know, those pieces of the instructional strategies and building that into it also. And I think that's really, really important um, because most of our kids really need that. The other thing that I think is really important here is that uh, 
that lead model test or what uh, we as teachers like to call uh, I do, we do, you do. And how when you lay over that, that sensory model, um, what you're talking about is as I'm doing it and showing you, uh, I as the teacher, the instructor, you are seeing it and hearing it. As we are doing it together, or that we do, then we are having our students see it, hear it, say it, and do it. And we know, Vince brought up that working memory, we know that that working memory really helps when we are saying it, we're hearing it, and it's making that track in the brain. Um, and so when we, the students are doing it themselves, they are saying it, they are still hearing it, they are doing it, uh, and that's really where that success comes from. And I think it's just really important to be looking at what are the kinds of things, if you have touch math, um, and I, I am known, I think, in the world now as the cookie sheet lady, but I love my cookie sheet uh, because I can hand it off to different kids and I can hold it up and show you guys. But that idea that I'm actually touching my touch points as I'm skip counting on my number, right? So I'm multiplying by three while I'm touching the touch points on the five. So I am skip counting five, 10, 15, 20, 25, right? Three times five um, is 25. So if I want to do one with, let's say my nines, I'm going to grab a double touch point. Here are my five. I am multiplying the nine on, on the nine by that five. So I'm actually feeling it. Now, if you have these 3D numbers that are magnetic, uh, then you know the inside of them are tactile, the outside of them are smooth. Not only that, but when you reach into it, the first thing you hit are the inner number, the inner uh, touch point. It's send it out. And this is receded back a little bit. And so I'm always going to start uh, by counting inner outer. And so when I'm doing this, um, I am multiplying by five on my touch points. So I'm saying five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So my students are actually touching my numbers and I really am encouraging you uh, to make sure that they are physically moving um, with their uh, pencil, with their fingers, with, with their bodies, whatever that works, um, to make sure when you are skip counting to solve a problem that that's what's happening there. So that's my quick and dirty on skip counting.